so in this session hello everyone in this session this is the continuation of the lead compensator in the last session we find out the transfer function of the lead compensator is that is v naught of s by vi of s that is output voltage by input voltage is 1 plus tau into s by 1 plus alpha into tau into s so this is the we are getting the transfer function so for this transfer function we already drawn the pole zero configuration right now we should draw the magnitude and the phase plots so for that purpose so we should draw to understand better we will go for draw the magnitude and the phase plot so what is the magnitude plot so for the magnitude plot simply before entering into this in order to draw this we should convert into the frequency model how can we convert it so i will convert like this 1 plus s by this is omega 1 and this is 1 plus s into alpha by omega 2 alpha by omega 2 okay from this i will write omega 1 equal to tau from this we will get omega 1 equal to tau and from this we will get omega 2 equal to alpha into tau okay and just i am comparing here alpha into tau so we will getting two frequencies this is one frequency this is the another frequency from this i will go for draw the magnitude and phase plot so here the magnitude plot is like this so generally the magnitude plot is like this we have two frequencies two frequencies corner frequencies so we don't have any dc gain here so generally it is i will change the color generally it is continue continuing but at the frequency of 1 by tau at the frequency of 1 by tau this is not 1 by alpha so this is simply this is 1 by alpha tau omega equal to 1 by alpha tau okay not alpha just remove this is the one yes 1 by omega 2 right so it initially the frequency is here 1 by tau we will get the frequency is the 1 by tau yes and second frequency is 1 by alpha tau so 1 by tau is less value so the first frequency is the 1 by tau we will get at the 1 by tau 1 pole will be added this is the 1 by tau omega 1 so the pole will be added and it will be continuing the magnitude but at the frequency of 1 by alpha tau this is the bigger frequency at this again 1 0 will be added whenever 1 0 will be added this will be like this this will be like this this is the magnitude plot so what about the phase plot so in order to draw the phase plot just take the phases here this is the phase plot so from that we have the phase we have like this this is the frequency logarithmic frequency we know that at initially there is no dc gain so that's why here up to 1 1 by tau up to 1 by tau frequency that is omega 1 frequency for omega 1 frequency it is 0 degrees it is 0 degrees but at 1 by tau we will have we will have 1 0 that's why it will improves like this it is improved like this but in at the omega 2 frequency that is at 1 by alpha tau it will be minus 90 will be added that's why it will become again the zero so this is the frequency and this is the frequency so if you observe here if you observe the gain here if you observe the gain here it is up for zero frequency it is less and when the frequency increases the gain will be increases so that's why we can name it as it is a i pass filter so we can communicate we can name it as this is the i pass filter because high frequency signals it will supply some give some gain it will give some gain and from this from this 
and we will have we will get some information this that is so we have two frequencies this is the w1 we can name it as another one is the w2 from using these two frequencies we will get the maximum frequency the maximum frequency is like this maximum frequency is is the un square root of two frequencies w1 and the w2 that is we will get the w1 is you know that this is the 1 by tau w2 is that is the 1 by alpha tau so we can write this is the 1 by tau and this is the 1 by alpha tau okay so by doing this we will finally get here tau square when it comes to outside it will become the tau and we have 1 by alpha here 1 by alpha here so this is the maximum frequency this is the maximum frequency the maximum frequency equal to 1 by tau into root 1 by alpha so this is the maximum frequency of the maximum frequency given by the lead compensator what about the maximum phase so we will get the maximum phase is directly i will write here this is the sign inverse of 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha sine inverse of 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha 1 minus alpha by 1 plus alpha this is about the maximum phase given by this phase okay yes so these are the very very important things the important things are the maximum frequency is important and the phase is the important and the transfer function transfer function by the lead compensator this is also the important thing transfer function by the lead compensator it is also the important point okay these three equations are very much important to understand the lead compensator so in this again we will understand what are the effects by using the lead compensator what are the changes we will get the lead compensator here the first change is the lead compensator adds finite zero near to imaginary axis zero to near near to imaginary axis and pole away from the imaginary axis you know that so already we did here so once again look at here the zero will be near to imaginary axis pole will be away from the near imaginary axis this is like this yes so it is high pass filter hence bandwidth system is very very high look at here so this is the high frequencies only it will give the more gain that's so if you can if you if you find out the if you find out the bandwidth bandwidth is very very high okay bandwidth because uh, lower cutoff frequency this is but upper cutoff frequency we don't know so bandwidth is very very high so third as bandwidth increases whenever the bandwidth is increases the rise time is decreases so always why bandwidth is nothing but the frequency bandwidth is proportional to frequency and pro frequency is inversely proportional to time so here whenever bandwidth is increases and the rise time is decreases rise time is decreases and whenever the rise time is decreases in the less time it will reach the steady state in the rest time it will reach the it will complete the transient so the transient response is improved so whenever the rise time inc decreases the transient response is improved that's why the lead compensator transient performance is improved fourth it increases damping ratio hence percentage of peak overshoot is decreases so whenever the damping ratio is increases damping ratio is nothing but zeta whenever the zeta increases automatically the oscillations will be decreases whenever the oscillations are decreases then automatically percentage of peak is decreases percentage of peak is decreases okay next and lc lc means lead compensator increases improves lead compensator not increases this is not this is wrong improves gain margin as well as a phase margin we discussed about the gain margin and phase margin those can be improved and it decreases the settling time means get settled fast it will be set settled very fast what is settling time the time is required to reach and three percent or five percent of the 
final value of the final value is nothing but the settling time next it is high pass filter hence the noise can be entered into the system so whenever high high frequency signal is entering into the system means the noise automatically enter into the system so the signal per noise is poor because noise is domination the signal per noise ratio is poor okay so here the high pass is proportional to the high pass high frequency high pass filter high frequency high pass not high frequency is proportional to the noise okay yes it creates attenuation in the system generally by using the system whenever the lead compensator uses it will become the attenuation what is attenuation signal strength will be decreases to eliminate the attenuation we add amplifier to the system so in order to eliminate this attenuation we will add a one amplifier whenever we should adding a amplifier automatically automatically the gain will be improved so it will be acts as a amplifier so these are about the lead compensators okay so lead compensators are useful wherever in order to improve the bandwidth and it, it increases the bandwidth it decreases the rise time and the settling time and it improves the gain margin as well as the phase margin and what are the defects defect is the noise will be entered into the system and the attenuation of the system will be high whenever the attenuation is high amplification is very very less okay so this is about the lead compensator magnitude and phase plots as well as the and maximum frequency allowed by the thing and maximum phase allowed by this and effects of the lead compensator okay i hope all of you understand the session thank you